Hey, today I thought I'd talk about how you can play PGM2 games on RetroArch. Um, the main versions that they have uh, on Android are not very good. Uh, they're outdated. Uh, the directories they use are really weird. I spent some time trying to get those to work, and uh, I just kind of had to fall back to RetroArch. So I'm going to go over a few things here, um, what I consider to be the ideal control setup. For these games, uh, PGM games all have the same uh, mappings. So if you use the mapping that I'm using here, uh, you'll be able to copy it directly into your retro arc and then pretty much play it a lot easier. Um, we have to keep in mind these are late era arcade games. So they're beat em ups with like large movesets and a lot of button combinations you need to do. Uh, generally, uh, by default, your Attack and jump will be mapped to X and circle, or A and B, respectively, depending on what controller you're using. B, A, <laughs> you know how confusing uh, letters are with button arrangements these days. That can be kind of hard to press. You kind of have to, you know, bend your thumb in a weird way. Uh, I like to put it on just attack on square and then um, jump on A, kind of like you know, the standard for most platformers and stuff. So we're going to go over that right now. Let me uh, load it up here. Game takes a while to load because it's a it's a much larger ROM than the average arcade game. So let it do all the bio stuff, the ROM check, everything. Now let me turn it up a bit. Okay, so what you want to do is go into the menu, go down to controls. And then go to port 1 controls, and then copy exactly what you see here. Uh, everything in terms of coin and stuff is going to be self-explanatory. It's mostly just the main uh, game buttons you're going to want to copy. So this is for a, a Microsoft controller. You're going to want to put this one on X, this one on B, this one on Y, and this one on A. So you'll have attack, jump, use item, and then the item wheel. And then everything else should be pretty self-explanatory. So if you play any PGM game, be it PGM1 or PGM2, uh, you will be able to just basically just copy this verbatim and you'll have a much better control scheme. Uh, using two horizontal buttons to do supers and stuff, it's something you have to do very often. Uh, it's not like, say, you remember Storm Rush in Dynasty Warriors 8 XL? <laughs> uh, they added that. Um, you know, you didn't have to push that, that button combination that much, but here you're going to be doing it like every few seconds. Uh, I don't really consider that to be very comfortable, so that's how I changed it. So let's get back to the game. Now one caveat about this is that if you play uh, without using MAME, you're not going to have access to the card files, so you won't be able to use uh, Liu Bei and Liu Bu at the bottom there. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of get around that by using save states. As you know, this is a very late era arcade game. This game is only 10 years old. So <laughs> it's as recent as stuff like, you know, Dark Souls and, you know, games like that. So it has an, an uh, IR card feature. Now, if you're on actual MAME and not RetroArch MAME, uh, you can actually get the files to basically make the, the emulator think that a card is, is attached and you can save that way. But uh, since I wasn't able to get MAME working, we're going to show how to do this. Imagine it's probably a nightmare to like emulate maximum tune in initial D. <laughs> this game, you you can't really play it without a card. Uh, you know, initial D and maximum tune and stuff. If you're just like not like a hardcore arcade goer, you can still play that game casually. But all the progression is tied to the card. So <laughs> if you don't have the card, you're missing out on like eighty percent of the game outside of just the core gameplay. This is very much the same. Uh, you'd be missing out on two characters. 
and actually being able to save progress. Like, if you're actually playing this on real hardware, you would pretty much need a card. It's ironic how this game outlasted the uh, the PS4 one. <laughs> Can't play that game anymore on any any platform. This game has a lot in common with uh, the PS4 one that shut down recently. I think the combat's quite a bit better here because the bosses actually stagger. <laughs> One of the things that was really off about uh, the Knights of Valor, the, the laziest one, is that the boss is rarely staggered. And a KOF All-Star is very similar to that game mechanically too, but you know, in that game they do still have content where the, the enemies stagger. So if you never played this game before, basically it is impossible to one CC this game. It's actually designed very similarly to, uh, how, you know, the the One Gone Midnight Maximum Tune and Initial D games are designed. That timer there counts down no matter what you're doing. Uh, the only way it will go, the only way it will go back up is if you. Uh, you put another credit in. So you get supers back really fast in this game, which is why I went through the trouble of figuring out the hieroglyphics of how to remap things. <laughs> RetroArch does not have a very user-friendly remap for a lot of these games. It won't tell you what button you're actually pressing, or what you're remapping. So after many hours, I found the perfect combination. One thing I don't like about this game is the play area is very large. Unlike a lot of progression-based beat-em-ups, they actually give you quite a bit of moves at the start. <laughs> it's actually pretty surprising. You definitely do still have the trappings of having... It this be a progression based beat em up and that a lot of your really good utility moves you're gonna have to grind for. But you're pretty relatively capable at the beginning.
Alright, time for the boss. This is where I feel this game does, uh... Combos on bosses way better than the PS4 version did. Stolen dizzy sound effect. <laughs> there we go, got some sauce there. You don't really have a super joy in this game. Super joys are basically your supers themselves. <laughs> See, I use that to get through his uh, little rage attack. Okay, so at this point, you want to uh, you want to drop a save state. That way you can play out using the cards. So let's wait until after the uh, the post-battle loot disappears, and then we're going to drop a save state. Now, I'd recommend dropping multiple, because your entire progress is going to be tied to the save state. You're basically using RetroArch to circumvent the fact that you can't really get in and easily make a card file. Okay, so at this point, I can go back. You save to this slot, and then uh, change your slot again. So that way, if I like back out of the game, let's uh, let's back out of the game really quick. Close the current content. Go back in. My progress will be saved. Okay, so you want to go to your slot, and there it is. You'll have all your progress back. Uh, also, if you play any PGM game and you copy the uh, the remappings that I did, make sure you save the game remap file. Uh, that way, when you go into the game again on RetroArch, you both have your progress and your controls remapped. Hope that helps fellow uh, beat em up players. It's basically the last good arcade beat em up to ever come out. <laughs> so uh, it definitely has its place in history. It's just uh, for preservation's sake, it's, it's kind of hard to run because of uh, the reliance on IR cards and stuff. And uh, the options to use those things on MAME are pretty limited, or at least on Android. So uh, this is a way around that. You won't be able to play as Lu Bei or Lu Bu, but if you're watching this, you have a computer to download the ROM anyway. I mean, you don't really need a. a uh, a supercomputer to play Knights of Valor 3. So you can always just play those characters at home. That's what I'm going to be doing in the future. Thanks for watching.